Good morning, everybody. My name is Karen Kong, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Ottawa, Canada, and welcome to my This or That Thursday. So every week, I try to post two cards in my Facebook page, and I ask my crafting community, that's all of you, to choose a card for me to make live on Thursday mornings around 9 a.m. I'm sorry I'm a couple minutes late. My phone was not behaving. Well, I guess the app, I don't know. Um, it wouldn't let me turn my uh, view sideways, and so I had to restart. And uh, anyways, I'm glad it's working out now. So it's behaving now, so we can get started. Today I have um, paper piecing for you. Uh, if you've never tried it before, I called it, um, I have to fix my, uh, the description in my post. I called it paper piercing, but it's not piercing, it's paper piecing. And uh, it's where I took DSP, and I stamped on DSP and cut it out, and it looks like my little bags from the uh, new um, stamp set, Attention Shoppers, is uh, patterned, right? I put the pattern right on the... Um, made it part of the uh, the bag. So instead of coloring it in, um, I just used DSP to uh, fill it in. So I thought that was really fun. I had a lot of fun cutting out the uh, pieces of um, DSP to make little, uh, little bags with patterns on them. So um, let me get started. I'm just going to get my uh, get my computer set up so that I can see your comments while we are crafting and I love it when you guys join me live because it gives me somebody to talk to and it's more fun of course when there's somebody to party with uh, to hang out with um, okay so let me just see if I can get the video going There we go. All right. Good morning, Sandra. Hi. Um, thanks for joining in. It was a late night post last night. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get everything together and make two cards, but I did. Um, let me just switch my view over so if you uh, get, get dizzy or that sort of thing, just close your eyes while I uh, reposition the camera. It's been a, an extra crazy week with uh, end of school year, end of dance year, everything kind of happening. It's been, I've had four different um, medical, dental appointments uh, for me, my, my son. Um, yeah, it's been a little nuts. So, okay, let me just make sure this is straight because it makes me crazy when I see the screen and it's my... Uh, this does not look straight. Okay, I know it's not straight. My camera is not straight. That's the problem. I thought this week I would try to adjust the uh, location of my uh, background, my grid paper, because the last few weeks I noticed that it was not actually centered. And it's always, a, it, I can't seem to do it before I start the live. It's, I don't know why it changes cameras from um, when I shoot a video versus have a live. I don't know what it is. Anyways do my best so here we go I think that looks good okay so like I said I took DSP to create my little uh, my little bags I stamped on the DSP and I cut it out um, and I thought it was really cute this DSP I don't know if you remember where it's from it's from the um, is it called dandy designs yeah dandy designs so I uh, have this leftover paper and I'm sure you guys have tons of leftover DSPs that you could use for this. Um, smaller patterns work best because the uh, the paper, I mean the little um, the uh, the little um, shopping bags are small, right? So you don't want a really large pattern where you're not going to see much of it um, inside the, the bag. So um, that's what I would recommend when you're choosing from your stash to make this card. And um, I did make a second card, and I just feel like um, I'm happy with like this part of it, but something is missing from the rest of it, and I could not figure it out last night, but I think I might take a second look at this and try something different. Um, but I do like this, you know, I pulled out this uh, black and white checkered uh, ribbon, and I thought it looked really great with this little bouquet so the background for this sorry not the background the paper the paper wrap around this um flower bouquet is dsp it's a dsp that has uh, little black dots on it so that's what i used it's also paper pieced for this card 
anyway so I'll put that away let's uh, let's make this card today um, I think that the most time will be spent on actually uh, cutting out the DSP but really it's um, if you don't mind fussy cutting and I've, I've grown to let's say I, I wouldn't say I love it but I don't mind it anymore I used to not like it a lot <laughs> but you know look at what I, you can accomplish when you can do paper piecing with uh, DSP that you fussy cut so okay so let's get started I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer and we will cut all the pieces needed for this card and then uh, and then we'll start doing the stamping and uh, cutting and all that sort of thing okay um, Actually, you know what would be a good idea is that when you are um, blending colors and using alcohol markers, which is what I'm going to use for here, um, it's better to let the ink dry before you start coloring because then it doesn't bleed um, as much, right? It, it may bleed if you uh, do it when it's still wet. And so maybe what I'll do is I should do the stamping first to give it time to dry before we start doing all the cutting okay so let's do that first uh, I see Sandra that you have a meeting at 10 all right so I'm hoping we'll be done by 10 let's let's get this uh, moving then okay I'm going to choose the same DSP set as I use for this card just to make things simple I don't have to think about it so much um, let me just grab the uh, DSP so that one and I have a purple checkered one here I thought I have everything ready but I guess I didn't I was uh, all ready to go thought I was ready to go okay oh I found some smaller pieces let's see if I can use those first and we'll need some white because I will need that for the white tissue let's see if I have any other small pieces left that we can use I just need one more of that um, polka dotted one but I don't think I have a small piece left I think I used all of it it's on the other side okay I guess I'll have to use that that other section okay let's put that aside the big package and we'll get out the um, stamp so this is a brand new set uh, introduced in the uh, new annual catalog and I just started playing with it yesterday I haven't played with everything yet but it's super cute like I wasn't sure exactly that I was like um, gonna be able to make use of it but I think you know it actually will be quite useful I think that's too small I need a bigger block all right here we go that's the uh, little paper bag stamp and I am gonna put this off to this side and we will get some um, memento black and I'm gonna stamp it I need it three times so let me just get another scrap of white okay here's some more scrap all right I'm just gonna ink this up and I always lift it up to check that I've got ink on every part of the image so I don't have any surprises when I stamp that I'm missing a section. Okay. I'm going to turn this around because the paper requires a little bit more room and I think it'll fit better this way. That little tissue paper sticking up is a little bit wider. I'm excited to do some more, make some more cards with this because uh, I've seen some other ideas where they put the wine bottle in the bag and I thought that was a great idea. Okay. Alright, so I need three bags and uh, of white. Okay, then I'm going to put these aside to dry. And now we're going to take our DSP and we're going to stamp right on the DSP. Okay, so I have one here. I can't believe I haven't tried this before, but I guess I just didn't have the right images to work with. That looks awesome because you need a line art image something that does not have a filled center right because you need um, you need your DSP to show through there 
I need one more in my polka dot. So let me just pull over the polka dot piece here. Actually, I'm going to turn it this way. Maybe I'll get one more stamp out of that later. There we go. All right. Let me close up my ink pad. And I'm just going to clean off my stamp with my chamois. Okay, so let's set those aside to dry. And I'm going to get my paper trimmer out. Now, if you're joining for the first time um, and watching for the first time, I always post my uh, measurements in the video description after the video is done. And so you can just enjoy watching. You don't have to write all the measurements down. I will provide them later. Okay, so this is Fresh Freesia. This is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. I'm gonna cut it in half. This is just a standard card base. So half of an eight and a half by 11, so five and a half here. Um, measuring right on the trimmer and I'm going to turn it sideways and we'll measure four and a quarter halfway again and we'll just score it using the scoring blade this time okay so that's our card base now I don't know if you can see but I did mat the uh, the white uh, on this Card. So this mat is three and three eighths by four and five eighths. So I'm going to take the remaining uh, section of paper and I'm going to trim off. Um, let me just think about which way I can best use this. I'm going to cut it three and three eighths this way. And then four and five eighths. So we'll trim it down to four and five eighths. All right, so that's the mat. And then I need my white mat, which is three and a quarter by four and a half. Let me just get another piece of paper. Let me just see, I have this leftover piece here. I don't know how long this one is, four and a half. Let's see. Oh, it's a little bit longer. Okay, so let's just trim it down. Four and a half by three and a quarter. There we go. So that's all we need. So we've got the two mats, we've got our card base. All right. And uh, let's go ahead and put this away. All right, so you'll notice that in the background here that I actually added some yellow shading. I felt like the, the white was just too stark um, all on its own. So I just took a small blending brush and I just added, um, I think it's Mango Melody, yes. So I put Mango Melody in the background, so I'm gonna put that on first. Let me just grab my ink pad. Okay, and it's in the top section, so I'm just going to get a piece of scrap first. Okay, so um, I like to have a piece of scrap so that I can tap off the excess, so I don't get a big dark blob right when I put my brush down. Okay, so I'm just tapping it off, and then I'm just going to very, very lightly start blending from the middle. Okay, so very, very light until I know how much ink I have on here and get the feel for how much, uh, how dark it is. So I'm blending out where I'm just making a circle, well, more like an oval, I guess, because I have three shopping bags to fit on. So I'm concentrating the, the color in the middle and then I'm just kind of making it lighter as it goes out to the sides. Yeah, I still love Mango Melody. It's just such a lovely color. 
And since this, this paper, so I'm matching it to one of the colors in the dots here. The, um, I looked at the uh, color scheme for the dandy designs, and that is the yellow that they used in this set. So that's why I chose it. So then it matches exactly. I think that'll work. Okay, so just um, a little bit of yellow. I did add some spattering. Can you see? I used a Mango Melody blends marker to add a little bit of spattering around here. I'm not sure if I love it yet, but it does add a little something. So I'll show you how I did that. I'm just wondering if I should do it in black, but uh, no, I think I'm going to leave it in Mango Melody. All right. Um, I'm just looking for my Mango Melody. There we go. Yeah, it's really hard to see. I'm sure you can't. Okay, so I'll hold it up a little bit closer. Um, can you see there's like little tiny dots? I have to post a, uh, a better picture afterwards, but um, there, I think you can see now. Okay, so I'm gonna put down some paper to just protect my, um, my grid paper. Actually, that's not quite big enough. Let me get a bigger piece. Because when you spatter, it's not really not really um, controlled as to where exactly it's going to land, so I'm just going to put a bigger piece there. Oh, this is Daffodil Delight. That's the wrong color. I thought I had them, I think I had them mixed up. Let me just see. Daffodil Delight. And this must be Mango Melody. Yes, it is. Okay, so I'm going to use the brush side, and I'm just going to press it against the inside of the lid and then flick it out. And it just adds tiny little dots. There we go. Can you see that? So hopefully that will look nice. I'm kind of, you know, you like I said, there's no real control as to where exactly those dots are going to land. But let's see how they look once, uh, once we add our little shopping bags. Okay, so um, I think what I'm going to do is I am uh, I'm going to cut out my patterned cardstock. Sorry, DSP. Um, you know what? I don't know if I you know, I have a stamp and write blend. Sandra's asking if this technique is better or same as if I use the blends. So the blends is similar um, as a similar tip, but I don't find it as flexible. Let me just get the. Uh, I'm just gonna get this um, scrap piece. Let me just try this. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna flick from the inside. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's less flexible because I've always found these ones to be more flexible, the alcohol tips. Um, but you still get like spattering. It's just I don't want to press it too, too hard because I still want the, the tip to maintain some stiffness. Um, anyways, that, that was a good question. Good morning, Tanya. Thanks for joining. Okay, so let me just put this away and I am going to bring back my stamped DSP. Okay, and uh, I need a pair of scissors and let's cut these out. So what I'm going to do is I want to leave the handle uh, to be a solid color and um, I tried actually, okay let me just point out to you, there's a little section in here on, between the handle and the top of the bag and I tried including the handle from the DSP in my first attempt, but it was really difficult to cut this middle section out. Maybe my X-Acto knife was not sharp enough, but I found it more difficult to work with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna cut the bag part out of the DSP. So if you see here, just the bag is part of the DSP. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, so I am cutting on, I'm just gonna take my glasses off <laughs> so I can see. And um, I'm going to cut on the outside of this line, the black line. But the good thing is, is that um, when you line it up with your original white image, uh, as long as you don't leave any um, color 
showing along the edge, it will blend in seamlessly. So you won't notice it. So just don't leave any white edge or any extra DSP showing um, when you cut it out. So here I'm cutting either on the edge of the black line or slightly within it. Okay, so I'm cutting around the handles right now. And I apologize if you're making comments, but I cannot read it right now because I'm trying not to cut outside the line and I can't see it without my glasses. <laughs> So these, these are like pretty easy shapes to cut. I found, I did the paper piecing for the um, the bouquet of flowers and that was a little bit more challenging because there's uh, little flower petals to cut around, but um, not impossible. So there's one bag. So if you've never tried paper piecing, it's pretty fun. Um, I like adding paper piecing. I don't know how to define it. Like I don't know if there's some, um, but basically it's uh, you're taking parts of your image um, from the pattern of a like of your DSP and adding it to the original image. I don't know if that makes any sense. My coffee has not kicked in yet. And I don't think this terminology or this technique is limited to paper. I think I saw on when I googled it, um, you know, people use it for sewing as well, right? where they take different fabric patterns and uh, put them... I don't know exactly how that part works, but um, use the different fabrics and piece them together. There's my second bag. Okay, here's my third. I'm just going to trim off. I'm going to take my paper trimmer and just trim off this section. It just makes it... It just makes it easier to manage when you're not holding a big piece of paper. So that's why I trim it down to a smaller size. So again, I'm staying either right on the edge of the black or just inside of it because I don't want to have any DSP showing on the right, like the outside edge, because then you'll be able to tell where you uh, added, where that paper is um, sitting on top of your original image. So you'll see what I mean when I go to add it to the original image. So I'm using white as my basic, my base um, stamped image because I want my paper to be white or I could like I could leave it as white or um, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to color it in to have, so that I have matching tissue paper to my DSP. But I mean you could you could stamp it and on like let's say fresh freesia and you could make all the uh, paper just be freesia by default. So and then Lots of different combinations out there that you could do. I'm just going to cut that off and then we'll just finish trimming this down. There we go. All right, so now is the fun part. I'm going to bring my uh, silicone mat out because I'm going to be doing some fine tip gluing. I'm not going to cut these out just yet. Okay, so where did all my white, my white pieces are here. Okay, I'm going to get some glue 
And let's get some of my glasses back on. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure how paper piecing applies, like the, the technique works with sewing. I'm sure there's like, you know, it's not super hard. It's um, just, I'm not sure exactly what applications it's used for. Maybe quilting? I don't know if that counts. Oh yeah, maybe quilting. Like, you know how they put the patterns on the, uh, the tops of the quilts in like, big pieces, right? Like make um, mosaics and stuff. So I imagine that's a form of paper piecings. Okay, so I put little dots of glue. Um, so I find that using little dots of glue gives me more control over how much glue I'm putting down and where I'm putting it down um, because I don't want it to squish out, right? So I'm taking my original image now and I'm just going to add it right on top. And because like you see, I cut right to the black um, edge when you put it on top, you won't be able to tell where you added it. Like it will look seamless. Doesn't that look great? Okay, so that's one. Let's do one more. Oops, don't want to squish it out. So try not to put too big of a blob. Oop, stuck to my finger. And you don't need tons of glue. That's plenty. I feel like it's almost a little bit magical adding the uh, DSP to the bag. I just think it's just so cute um, that I have a different pattern. And if I had had more time this morning, I would have picked a different set so you could, you know, just to play around. It's just fun to have like different um, patterns on our little bags. But like I said, you got to choose a pattern that is small enough that you can see on your bag. Because if you choose like a really big pattern, like let's say, let me just show you. Like this pattern would not work on your bag. Like the flower is just way too big. You would only see a small section of it and it wouldn't make sense. So like I said, you need a small pattern that's going to be visible on your, on your uh, little bag or whatever area you are paper piece piecing on. It has to be, it has to work for that size. Okay. Last bag. I'm just lining up the black so that it's centered so my handles are visible. Okay. All right, so now before I cut these out, so there is a die for this um, bag. <clears throat> it's right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to color it in first. Um, so for this one, I'm going to use Petal Pink, another color. So all the colors I picked are from the DSP um, set, okay? That's how I know that it will match. Okay, so for the purple one, I think I still use, I used a uh, Fresh Freesia. So I'll use the light Fresh Freesia for this one. And I'm going to leave the paper white for this one. So I'm just going to color it in. Okay. And then for these ones, one of them is, um, the paper is uh, Fresh Freesia and the handle is Petal Pink. So let me do the handle first. This one is Dark Petal Pink. Just so I don't get confused and color in the handle by accident when I don't mean to. Okay. And I'm going to do a little bit of blending. So I'm going to use the dark Fresh Freesia. It's not really super visible, but I think it's a little bit. So I'm just going to use it in the creases and around some of the edges to give it a little bit of depth. And I'm going to try to work 
fairly quickly so that I can easily blend the alcohol ink before it dries. So that's what makes it blend um, so well because if you do it um, while the alcohol ink is still wet, then it, it blends the, uh, the dark and the light easily. But if you let it dry for too long, then you have to put more ink down in order to blend it and it can cause the black lines to bleed if you have to put a lot more ink down. There, that's one bag. I'm going to turn it around and we'll do the other one in petal pink. So let's see. This is my dark. So I'm going to add, I always like to do the dark first and then um, blend with the light. Oh, I didn't do the uh, handle yet. I'll have to do that afterwards. I can't wait to try this with different DSPs. You know, use whatever's in your stash. And uh, I have seen this done with the new in color um, patterned DSPs, and they work really well with that one. But I didn't get that yet. I say yet. I'm not sure if I want to, but it is a really nice set. Of DSP in the in colors and I really like all the new in colors but uh, I haven't got it yet so I'm using what's in my stash let me get uh, a light brush Risha, and we'll color in the handle here So now let's die cut out our little bags. Aren't they cute? All right. So I couldn't use the die cutter to die cut to do the paper piecing because it, it leaves a white edge. There's too much of an edge, so that's why you have to fussy cut it. do this one at a time. I think it's almost time to replace my uh, my cutting plates. They're pretty scratched up. Sandra has two of the new in colors already. One of them is actually a returning color, so she had that from previously. Um, Summer Splash, I really like. It's it's the closest thing to Bermuda Bay because Bermuda and Bermuda Bay. I was sad when they retired that color because it's such a beautiful blue. So, Summer Splash will have to be my new Bermuda Bay, and I'm gonna have to get it at some point. It's just a matter of when, and. Uh, <laughs> I'll probably wait until like the new quarter and then maybe I'll get the whole set instead because it's a better deal obviously if you don't have any of them to get all five colors at once because you get bundle pricing. Alright, 
right, that's two, and I have one more to go. It's too low. Sorry. I'm a perfectionist. Okay, there we go. And that is all the die cutting we need, so I'm going to put this away. Okay, so now we have our three shopping bags, or the three gift bags rather, and we can start assembly. So let's put this together. Actually, you know what? I can stamp happy birthday. So um, it's always a good idea to do your stamping because um, before you assemble, if you can, and uh, that way, if you make a mistake, you can still um, replace that one piece instead of having to rip apart the card or start over again. And I'm just looking for my stamp set, um, looking for the happy birthday. Actually, I'm going to use thanks this time. Um, oh, I didn't show you the inside of my card. Here we go. So this is actually a gift card. Um, I actually put a little gift holder inside. So this, if you recall, is the hexagon punch. And I realized that um, it fits the, uh, the gift card. So if you take, this is an old credit card, and um, it fits right inside. So you just make sure that you don't uh, adhere the edges of your hexagon. And this actually fits right inside. And so you make it into a gift card holder, right? So I thought that was cute. So this time I'm going to make it into a thank you card so that I could possibly use it for one of my daughter's teachers for the end of year school, um, end of school year gift. Okay. So this is the thanks. Thanks, Sandra. Yeah, I thought it was, uh, it was a great idea. I was thinking, um, of which shape I could use to create the, uh, the little slot. And I came to realize that the hexagon actually fits. I was worried that it was too narrow, but it actually fits. So it was, wor it was really a, a great discovery. Okay, so let's just line this up and using my uh, grid paper to help me line this up. There, thanks. Right. And now we'll assemble because now I know I have everything stamped properly. Okay, so let me get my bone folder and we will burnish the edge just to give it a nice fold. Okay, uh, I have to mat my original piece, so let's use today. I always stay a little bit away from the edge so that if the glue squishes out, well, so that the glue does not squish out, right? You need a little bit of room for it to flatten. Um, and then also a little bit of room so that you can maneuver it if you uh, didn't place it down exactly where you wanted it. So don't put the, the glue right to the edge. Okay. There. All right, and we'll do the same thing on the freesia. Oops. Okay. And I always put my left edge down on an angle so that nothing touches. The glue is not touching. So if I change my mind 
or I put it down in the absolute wrong spot or is upside down for whatever reason, I can still take it off. But right now I have lined up the left and the top and bottom um, to make sure I have the right spacing before I actually lay it down. And the glue gives me a little bit of wiggle room if it's a little bit crooked. Oops, see I pushed it out of the out of alignment and I can just push it back and that's fine. All right. Okay, so um, let's put the bags on. So I'm just going to lay it out before I go ahead and do it. Two of them are flat. The middle one is popped up on dimensionals. Okay, I'm going to put it a little bit closer this time. Um, I put the two on before I realized that I didn't put them close enough to uh, as I preferred. I wanted to have a little bit of overlap on the uh, bags. So this time I'm going to put them a little bit closer. So I'm just going to glue it down. And again, I'm not going to go close to the sides. You really don't need a lot of glue. I'm just going to put it right in the center. And I like to use my tweezers because that allows me to hold it over my my uh, card and position it without my fingers in the way. Um, and place it more easily. Okay. Again, right in the center. And let's put this here. And let's get some dimensionals. I'm going to put the dimensionals like right in the center of this so that it doesn't overlap on the edges here. Um, so that it lays, the sticker lays flat. Just gonna raise it up just a little higher. There we go. Okay, so I used a little bit of bling on this. I used uh, the 2021-2023 in color jewels. These have been in my stash for a while, and I uh, think they match great. I'm gonna use the Fresh Freesia bling. Okay, so I need to take your pick tool. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, before I add that, I am actually going to cut the back piece for the um, for the gift card holder. So this is just, I think it's a four by four. Let me just get, double check that. And again, I will post the measurements. Yeah, four by four is what I used. Yes. Okay, so I just need a four by four piece of white. Let me just find one. I think this is bigger than I need, so I'm going to cut it down on the... Uh, I'm just going to use my paper trimmer off the screen rather than having to move everything out of the way. Just going to cut it down. Okay, so here is the 4x4 four four piece for the inside. And... I'm looking for my punch. <laughs> what do I do with it? Here it is, right in front of me. Okay, here's the punch. I'm just going to unlock it. And I'm just going to put the, um, the hole right near the top. I just need enough room to actually uh, to just stamp, treat yourself. So that's why I wouldn't put it too far down. But you need enough, like I want to put um, adhesive behind here to help it hold hold it. And I'm going to use tear and tape, so I want to make sure that it's wide enough for my tear and tape. So that's all I really have to check when I'm uh, punching it, is that I leave enough room for that tear and tape to help secure the uh, gift card holder. Okay. And let's Let's stamp treat yourself before we go and uh, adhere that. Yeah, so I want to do that before I put the bling on the front because then it'll be harder to, to press down. Um, okay. And I'm just going to use black. Okay. 
always hold it up to check that everything looks evenly inked. Okay. And I'll use my grid to help me center and just eyeball that it's straight. Oh, this is not quite straight. So now I'm going to take tear and tape. Tear and tape holds it down really well. So all I'm going to do is put tear and tape all around the edges. You just need to make sure this is open um, so that you can slide in your gift card. This is, I think this is about the right time of year to be making gift card holders for teacher gifts, um, I don't know about you, like once your your child is past the elementary age, you don't really have to give gifts anymore, I guess, but, uh, so this is my daughter's last year in elementary. Well, I, technically speaking, seven and eight is still elementary, but I think I found that at that age, they didn't even give gifts to the teachers. Uh, we didn't really know our son's teacher in seven and eight. There were not very many um, school events, and so we didn't really get to know them. Um, and they weren't in touch with parents, uh, you know, sending out e um, emails and uh, what's going on. And we didn't have to volunteer at that age uh, for that age group. So um, I don't feel as connected to the teacher in the grade seven and above age group. So, and I was told by other friends that at, at that point, you don't need to feel like you have to give a gift. But, you know, if I was if I knew the teacher, then I would probably still give a gift, but I didn't. Um, I didn't know any of the teachers there. But her current teacher right now is someone she's had for the last three years. She was really lucky that, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's a benefit to have different teachers each year, but um, in her case, she had the same teacher. She's had the same teachers for three years because it was such a small cohort of students in the French Immersion Program um, that she ended up with her. It was only, only a handful of teachers that she could have possibly gotten. So, so I know her quite well and we're good friends. And so, um, she will definitely be getting a gift this year to thank her for everything. And we will definitely miss her next year. Uh, when my daughter moves to grade seven and leaves the school. So there we go. So now you have your little holder for your gift card and we'll add the bling to the front. Where's my teacher pick tool? Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's just take one here. And put it up here this time. And that is the card. Pretty easy card today. I think the hardest part was just cutting out the the little patterned um, DSP for your your bag. But really, it was. I think it was well worth the effort. I think it's super cute, and I can't wait to try it with some other patterns in my stash. Um, thank you, Tanya. I like the colors too. But really, I'm just following like whatever was in you know the Dandy Designs color scheme and um, in the dots here and I think you know once if you just use like the the Stampin' Up colors to match it it all works out so well and that's that's like the huge advantage of using Stampin' Up colors they all coordinate you always have the ink pads um, the right colors and it just works out so well so I love it I hope you'll be inspired to try it out you could even try you know like I said it doesn't have to you don't have the have the exact same stamp set I'm sure you have some line art images in your stash that you could try this with um, and make some beautiful cards with your stash of DSPs um, and make use of what you have so give it a try I'd love to see what you guys come up with you know you can always post your creations in the comments and um, I always like to see um, that you've been inspired so have a great week do some crafting and I will see you next week bye everybody